complex masking and precise selections, it's really gonna be one of the main reasons I would ever leave my raw editor of Lightroom or, or Adobe Camera Raw. One of the main reasons I would ever leave that for a photo to go into Photoshop when I need precise control over a very specific area of the photo. In this case, what we'll show you, see here is the highlights in the photo. This is taken on terms of luminosity masking where we have channels, we've got tons of layers, tons of selections, you've even got panels that are built. I'm not saying they don't have their place, but what I wanna show you is you can take that exact concept who cares what it's called? With just a couple of clicks, you can create one of the most complex and precise masks possible. And you can use that anywhere you want on your photos very, very quickly. Let's jump over onto the computer. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off with the landscape example, show you how we can create this highlight mask on landscapes and where would be useful, especially over here in this top left area. And then I'll also show you how we can use the same concept on a portrait photo. And this would translate the same to wildlife or travel or still life, whatever it happens to be, okay? All right, so we'll start off here on our landscape photo. And I'm gonna be inside of Lightroom. You could do everything that I'm about to do here inside of Adobe Camera Raw, okay? Same exact steps, same everything could be done with Adobe Camera Raw if you're not using Lightroom. So what I started to do here is I found, I, I wanted to open up the shadows a little bit on this. Um, I thought it was a little bit flat, so I went with a little bit of dehaze here. I, I tried pulling down highlights, and this is where you're gonna first start to see the problem, all right? As I pull down my highlights, number one, it's a global correction, so it's, to me, negatively affecting other parts of the photo. Number two, it gives a really hard, weird gradation to the sky. And that's just too much gradation to go from bright white to this deeper blue over here. Um, it, it's just too much of a change for me in a landscape photo. So I'm not really gonna get there in a global way. I can pull down my exposure, I'm not gonna get there. Um, I can pull down highlights, I'm not gonna get there. So then that leads me to do a local correction where I can use the graduated filter, pull down a combination of exposure and highlights and uh, try to do it this way, all right? So once I do that, and you can see the problem, it's still not getting this area over here, all right? So now I would really have to pull down highlights. A brush isn't gonna do it. Uh, my only option after this would be to maybe try a luminance mask. Uh, we have our range masking here inside of Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw. So we could go to the range mask and choose luminance which will give us this whole range and we can say, okay, only apply it to a luminance range where it's the bright highlights to these midtones, which would be the brighter parts of the sky. And that's not even getting, it, getting us there. You could still just see a big dip. I could even try to pull this down and we're still not gonna be where I wanna be for, for this photo. You can see too much of a gradation change in there. Although we do get closer, to me it starts to muddy uh, some of the background here, I can work with the smoothness a bit. But again, the more I work with the smoothness, the contrastier that sky starts to become. So you can see it's just not, again, we're, we're severely affecting the foreground. Brushing could be an option. And if you need to do this stuff quick, this is not bad. What I'm about to show you is for people that really want to spend a little bit more time crafting the work on their photo. But what, I'm, what I've shown you so far is not a bad way to go. It just takes away some of the control you have. So we're gonna get out of here. We've, I, I've realized that if I want ultimate control over this sky, I need Photoshop. I'm not gonna be able to get this level of control inside of Lightroom. So from here, what we're gonna do is head over to Photoshop. I'm gonna go photo, go down here to edit in, and I'm gonna go down to open as a smart object in Photoshop. I don't often use smart objects. Um, I know the non-destructive police is gonna let me know how bad I am in the comments, but I don't, I don't care for smart objects. Uh, they're very restrictive. However, in this case, when I know I'm gonna merge two versions of a photo, Okay, two of the same photo, but different tonality versions together. I do use a smart object and you'll see why in just a moment. Uh, if you're inside a camera raw and you're gonna jump to Photoshop, if you hold down your shift key, you will see an option that allows you to open it as a smart object. Now, once we get over into Photoshop, I wanna make a copy of this. So what I'm gonna do is go layer, go down here to smart objects. I'm gonna choose new smart object via copy. I can't just press command or control J to make that copy. I have to do new smart object via copy. 
to make sure it's a different, separate copy. What this is gonna allow me to do is work on the bottom layer as the foreground, and then work on the top layer as the sky, and I'll be able to work on these separately. I'll be able to double click either one of these, go back over, it's not gonna take me to Lightroom because that's not the way it works. It'll take me into Adobe Camera Raw, which is the same as Lightroom, and I can make changes to this. But before we do that, let's, let's do what we came to Photoshop for, which is put a very complex yet feathered and more natural mask into place. And the way we do that is gonna be in the channels palette, okay? Now, there's something called a luminosity mask. We don't need to do this level of complexity, okay? With luminosity masks can go, can introduce a huge level of complexity. Uh, there's panels that are built around them and there's all these different things. And what I hope that you get from this tutorial is that you don't have to go down that rabbit hole. You can use luminosity masks, but in a very simple way that isn't really what you would see online normally. So here's what we do. We hold down the command key on Mac or control on a PC, and we click on this little RGB icon over here. So command or control click, and that's gonna put a selection around the luminance values, 50% or greater in the photo. So we have just selected the luminance. The interesting thing about this is this is a very natural feathered selection, okay? So it's gonna give us much better result. However, I don't want it to affect the whole sky. I just want this area over here. So what I can do is refine this mask. And the way we do it, it's with a, it's with a three key keyboard shortcut. So on a Mac, it's Command Option Shift. On the PC, it's Control Alt Shift. And you'll know you did it right Command Option Shift, Control Alt Shift, when you look at your cursor and there's a little X icon next to it. So what we do is we click on RGB again. And what we've done is we've refined this luminance mask to be brighter highlights, not quite the range it, it, it acquired before. And then we Command Option Shift again if we don't, and you're gonna have to eyeball this. I can just tell most of the sky is still selected by the marching ants here. Command Option Shift, Control Alt Shift, click again. Get in there, click again. Even better, I might even click one more time in this example. You might not be able to click this many times in your photo if you don't have the, the, the extreme dynamic range that I have here. You might see a message that pops up that says there isn't a selection visible, so keep that in mind. But it's a little bit of a learning process, but you can start to do this really quick, okay? So now, I have a very refined feathered selection, all right? So what we can do here is head over to the layers panel and we just wanna add a mask. So just go down to the bottom of the layers panel and there's a little icon to add a layer mask to it. It's a little basically rectangle with a hole poked out in the middle of it. Just click that little icon and that will add a mask. I do have an action for you that you can check uh, the description. If you're interested, it will help you with this process. There's even a video that goes along with the action. Uh, my hope is, is that you use it as a learning tool. It can help you with this process to create a couple of different visual selections so you can see it, but you don't have to. You can do what we just did here very, very easily. If I option or alt click on that layer mask, now you can see what's white is selected, what's black is not. That's the way a layer mask works. So now this layer mask is in place, okay? And honestly, after looking at it, I mean, I might even go one level deeper, all right? So it's, again, really, really simple. Just go over here, Command click the first time, Command or Control click, and then Command Option Shift click, click twice, click three times, click again. I might even go one level deeper here. Heck, I'm gonna go one level deeper, there we go. I'm gonna go there, okay? Again, go back to layers, click that little icon, option or alt click, and now you can see we've really refined this. And you can see it's very natural and feathered as well. That's what these gradations are. Okay, so option or alt click to get back to normal. Now we just need to make some adjustments to the sky. Very simple, since we already have our mask in place, we double click on the layer thumbnail for that smart object. Pops us open in the camera raw, and now, I don't even care what the foreground looks like because I know it's not gonna be visible. So I can pull back on my highlights here. I can pull back on my shadows, maybe even not so much on the highlights. All right, did I say shadows? I meant exposure, you know what I meant. 
I'll pull back a little bit on either one of those. I'm actually even gonna pull back on dehaze because the dehaze was for the foreground. The dehaze was not for the sky and you can see it even, it added to that hard gradation that we had in the sky there. So I'll pull back on those as well. So uh, maybe even a little bit on saturation to just push a little bit of blue and even warm it up a bit. Something right around there. Again, I don't even care too much about what's happening over here because I know it's not gonna be visible. Watch, when we click OK, it is gonna update that layer. And now we have a nicer, smoother transition and gradation. It's gonna be bright over here no matter what. That's, that's gonna be a fact of life. We're never gonna get rid of that. But what we're trying to do is not make it bright white. Okay, trying to introduce some of that natural color that was over on that side without negatively affecting this side, but we also have a mask, meaning I can take my brush tool, set the foreground color to black. I usually do it with a lower opacity, 30, 40%, and then I can even paint over here if it did start to make that area too dark. Okay, so that even helps even this whole out, even this whole thing out even more. And now I've got my foreground where I can go double click on that layer and maybe even add a little bit more dehaze to it. Maybe even add a little bit more whites to it, which I couldn't do before because it would have destroyed all of that highlight detail over there. I even pull back on the blacks a little bit, a little bit more contrast, click OK. Now I can update that foreground and it's independent of the sky. So I have two of these layers, essentially a highlight mask that's really controlling the bright highlights that I happen to have in this photo. So let's take a look at what would be different on a portrait photo. So we'll go ahead and open up this portrait photo. Uh, I've gone through, I've done my basic exposure to it. Um, let's go get out of the adjustment tool here. I've done some basic exposure, shadows, highlights, whites, blacks. Um, what I'm finding is, is as in, from an overall exposure standpoint, I like the exposure here. I'm not crazy about how some of this gets really bright. I have some of the brighter spots on her face, uh, some of the shadows, but I, I can't, I can't pull back because when I do that, it to me makes the shadows too dark in some areas. So knowing that and knowing that I have a highlight mask at my disposal in Photoshop and a very complex one, I can go photo, edit in open as a smart object in Photoshop. Once I get there, I just go layer, smart object, new smart object via copy. So now I have a separate one. This is gonna be the one for my highlight mask. And then I go to my channels. Again, there's an action in the description you can download uh, that'll help you with this process a little bit, give you a little bit, a little bit more of a visual way uh, to go. It does include a little video with it, but simple. We command or control click on that RGB channel and then Command Option Shift on the Mac, Control Alt Shift on PC, click once, maybe click twice. That's actually looking pretty good. I just want it over here on the shoulder on the right in this right side of the face. So that looks good. Go back to layers, add that layer mask. It automatically keeps everything intact and now I can adjust that top layer. So just double click it. That will take us back over into Adobe Camera Raw. Now I can pull back a little bit on my exposure, pull back a little bit on my highlights. I don't like the way it's negatively affecting this side of the face. I don't like the way some things get dark here. But again, all I'm keeping an eye on is the bright spots. So I know that that's gonna work. So I click OK and you can see it'll update that layer. And now we have the best of both worlds. That's before, that's after. And just like before, if you wanted to use a brush, to brush any of it out and bring some highlights back in, you could do it. You know, I could brush a little bit of the highlight back into the shirt, but not all of the way. And what that gives is a very easy way to create a complex mask, but still all of the same tools, brushes and selections, all the same tools that we could always use to modify that mask if we wanted to. Now, in the beginning, I had mentioned that this was a little bit of an offshoot on luminosity masking. And I do believe luminosity masking is a more complex topic. You don't always need that complexity, but if that is something you wanted to explore more because you want more control over your photos, I just want to let you know I do have a video on that topic and you can watch that one if you wanted to learn a little bit more about it.